the whole team is messed up, man. Come on. Turkaloo, Turkle Jerk, what's his name? What's his name? He looks like he's supposed to be retarded, but God changed his mind. <laughs> ah! <laughs> he running down the court. <laughs> Fuck! What's up? How y'all feeling? Come on, Vegas. Come on, it's not hot enough in here, goddammit. Shit, you are here. We are here to roast... Uh, Emmett? Emmett, yeah, Emmett. Emmett Smith. Yeah, Emmett Smith. <laughs> Nobody really knows who the fuck he is. That's why we only have these people. <laughs> they was calling out people's names. Y'all don't know who the fuck is. Okay, I don't know this motherfucker either. Who is this motherfucker? Because nobody really knows <laughs> who Emmett Smith is. <laughs> Shaquille O'Neal is here tonight. Right on you. Come on, y'all got more than that, goddammit. <laughs> Standing on your feet. Standing on your feet for Shaquille O'Neal. Shaquille O'Neal, three peat. Did he do his thing? Three peat. Where the Laker fans at? Woo! I can't stand none of y'all motherfuckers. I can't. I'm from Dallas. Y'all fix game six. Y'all fix game six. I don't know. He said they fix game six. Shaquille O'Neal, seven feet tall, 300 pounds. It's a big motherfucker, huh? <laughs> I mean, any, I mean that's, that's a lot of material. When you see his suit, that's a lot of fucking material. Size 23 shoe. Look at the ladies. Oh, shit. Holla. Size 23 more. What size shoe you wear, Joe? Nine Six. Nine. <laughs> oh. First one. He got big as the motherfucking hands. He shook my hands with fucking index fingers right here. This motherfucking shack is If it's any indication of how big his dick is, that's some crazy shit right there. That's just a myth. <laughs> is it a myth? It's a myth. Monique's had it. Trust me, it's a myth. <laughs> it just if his dick gets hard, he'll pass out if his dick is that fucking big. That's, that's a lot of blood. That's why he's always so cool and calm and shit. If that motherfucker get excited, he gonna pass the fuck out. That's why he's always I just wanna thank everybody. If you get any more excited, because Shaq don't ever get excited about shit. Am I right? He won the third. He won the NBA championship. Everybody's excited. He's still, thank you. <laughs> shit. Radio Shaq. <laughs> what can we say about Emma Smith? <laughs> Not a goddamn thing right now. I don't... <laughs> when you think about football, when you think about legends in football, you definitely, definitely do not put Emmett Smith at the top of the list. <laughs> First timers, y'all don't know what a roast is all about. If you think I'm fucked up right now, wait till these motherfuckers get up here. Let me at him, let me at him, let me at him. We're gonna bring, we're gonna bring out uh, Shaquille O'Neal. By the way, the after party, R. Kelly is throwing the after party tonight. <laughs> The after party's gonna be a Chuck E. Cheese. I wanna make <laughs> Anybody over 21, oh, you're not getting in. Oh, shit. Oh, hell no. He's got a brand new album out coming out. It's called You Remind Me of My Niece. Make sure you go pick that one up. <laughs> oh, man, what am I doing? Oh, shit. Oh, Seems man. like you're ready. <laughs> Before you were ready. <laughs> Y'all will get it. Y'all will get it in a minute. Y'all think I'm fucked up. Wait till these motherfuckers come up here. <laughs> we have Michael Irvin in the house. Michael oh. Irvin. Caribbean <laughs> 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 Blake, baby! <laughs> Michael Irvin just signed a deal with Coca-Cola. <laughs> But they're changing the, the, the logo from have a Coke and a smile to have some Coke and a smile. <laughs> Fuck y'all, let's have a good time. That's my dog. That's my dog. He knows I love him and he got some good shit too. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado. <laughs> I want to bring out the person who put this all together for Emmett Smith. Emmett Smith, we are gonna roast your motherfucking ass yeah, yeah. tonight. When you leave, when we leave tonight, I may not.
not be at the after party because y'all might be chasing my ass. Uh, but we have to bring out the person to put this all together. I'm going to tell you right now, Shaquille O'Neal, regardless of what I said, is a very, very humble brother, a very, very nice person. Not that smart, but the thing about it is he can play, he can play basketball like a motherfucker. That's all that matters. Fuck what the SAT score said. It don't matter. <laughs> Fuck the money they gave him in college and kicked him in college and he didn't go to class and all that shit. It don't matter. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, are you talking to me? Am I, am I going to bring him out now? Can I bring him out now? <laughs> and you know they about to fuck me up too. That's good. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Mr. Shaquille O'Neal. Jamie Fox, Miss Three Planes. I don't think you miss planes, just ain't had nowhere to put them big ass lips. <laughs> uh, I love you too. The next guy that's about to come out has been a personal friend of mine. He's the best running back in the game. And we're going to talk about his big head ass tonight. <clears throat> Emmett Smith, come down. Where you at, Emmett? Come down, come up. Where you at? Emmett Smith. I wasn't here for rehearsal, that's some fly shit. I, I thought you was gonna rap or some shit and do some, come out with an album like Deion Sanders. And go plastic. He was, okay, uh, I don't give a fuck. Y'all gotta understand what a roast is. We about to roast these motherfuckers. I love them, but they finna have it right now. Emmett is, Emmett is the greatest defensive lineman I've ever experienced in my entire life. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, please put your hands together for a, a friend of mine who's a very talented, uh, talented comedian uh, and all that kind of shit. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Joe Torrey. Hey, hey, hey! Y'all ready to have a good time? Let me hear you say, hell yeah! Hell yeah! All right, cool. Hey, I I was wondering, though, how'd your big ass head come up through there? So I was wondering, he came up through there, and I'm like, man, is he gonna hit his head? I thought you had a helmet on, but you know, all you really need is a chin strap on your face, you'd be straight. <laughs> so, big head. Emmy <laughs> Smith, why are we, like, like, like Jamie said, why are we roasting this cat? I mean, y'all act like he's still playing football. I don't know why, how long you been playing, like, what, 20 years? Huh? Got every record, got every record, got Jim Brown record, Walter Payton record. Him and Jim, you know, Jerry Rice just call each other. You ain't got nothing else to do but be old. <laughs> Don't hanging around, and they wife's running them out the house. Man, they can play another season. You play, I'll play. <laughs> but Eminem's from Florida, along with Michael Irvin and Deion Sanders. You know, your old, you know, your old running buddies. And, you know, I, ain't nothing wrong with Florida cats, but all of them in the NFL, like, what, 75%? 
NFL, am I right? Florida people? Right. From Florida? Uh, you know right. what I'm saying? Right. I mean, what they feed y'all down there? You know, I mean, you know, what's down there? Hey, grits, grasshoppers, and greens, what's going on? <laughs> all of them jump, all of them just athletic, but can't none of them dress. <laughs> Have you seen these people from Florida dress? They ain't no colors. I seen what? I seen Michael Urban in church. I thought the spotlight was on him all day. I was like, what, what, what the, why, why they got the spotlight on Michael Urban? He on a yellow shoot with some red high heel flip flops. <laughs> like, you from Florida, you right? I'm from Florida. Emmett, you know, you know, this is the most, you know, decolorized I've seen you. You know, usually you got on, you know, pastels, pink, green, you know, got on a whole lot of colors. You know, he's really a sigma. I don't know if white people, y'all know what that is. That's a sigma, that's it's a black fraternity. It really ain't a black fraternity, it's just, you know. Something like the Cub Scouts, we just connected to it. <laughs> you know, because Shaq, you know, it's only one fraternity, right? Mega Sci Fi. That was. When he did that, that's what, you know, that's what that means, white people. It wasn't no Zulu stuff. He about to jump out and you know, bite y'all or something like that. It wasn't like. And Jamie tried to bag on me. I ain't forgot about you. Mike Tyson told me he coming to get you, okay? <laughs> Uh, he was talking, I'm gonna get Jamie. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna beat him up. I'm just gonna just hold him by the back of the head and let him mow my lawn. Have you seen his teeth? <laughs> yeah. Then I'm gonna get a buggy and I'm gonna make him just ride me around. I got oats and sugar cubes. <laughs> you know, we're gonna get you sitting up here with, you know, I don't know what. You know, this is me on TV. You didn't call me hair, didn't get a haircut. You know, got on tennis shoes. I'm, I'm coming on down the line here because I like to mess with everybody. You got Michael Carrier looking like a civil rights lawyer, still looking for him. <laughs> like a hanging case or something like that. And Jimmy Johnson, the coach. See, Jimmy Johnson fool y'all. You know, he sit there, you know, like he all mild-mannered. He, Jimmy Johnson used to slap the shit out of them. <laughs> I got the lost files of the Dallas Cowboys. I ain't lying. I got it. And his hair never went out of place. I don't know what that is. Like he got a surfboard tucked up under there. He does, Beat the shit out of somebody, hair ain't moved. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, you know, you know, I ain't, I'm gonna go past you, Mike. I ain't messing with Dick. Dick's a legend. I ain't messing with Dick Gregory. You know, I ain't, uh, Dick is a legend. Dick, Dick know Uncle Ben and... <laughs> yeah, check. Dick go back. I ain't messing with Dick. <laughs> you know. Nah, I can't mess with you, Monique. Nothing like that. I heard you, you know, sugar level's high. I don't want to make a pass out. I ain't gonna mess with you, Monique. She'll go down the line here, Stuart Scott, but if your eyes pop out your head anymore, you, you won't work. So, because you know, Stuart see everything in 3D. That's when you see him on TV. <laughs> Constantly doing this because he's ducking. He think y'all coming at him. <laughs> That's why he moved like this, talking, you know, him and did this. But, you know, my, I had to let that go. I had to let that go. I ain't got nothing to say about you, Shaq. I got you last year. But, uh, I mean, you know, really, I, I, I don't, you know, I wish they released the lost files that they have on you. You know, how you cry when you fumble, how Jimmy slapped you around the locker room, you know. So, you know, he just, you know, he's a powerful little running back, but, you know, he really just, you know, kind of like got a, in 40, in 40, I can't say the word, a small complex. <laughs> I've been drinking back, so I can't say the word, but uh, anyway, he been, you know, he just really like Webster grown up mad at the world. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I see him slapping around, threatening Gary Coleman. He don't pick on nobody taller than him. <laughs> so, you know, you need to watch out for him. Watch out for him. But, man, I love you, man. I, ain't, I can take up all the time, but my mouth is dry. They have no water for us, nothing like this. We're in the MGM, and I'm sitting there looking like, you know, looking like R. Kelly around the mouth. I can't, I gotta go. <laughs> Get out, hey, I love you, man, and that's, that's my top. <laughs> Give it up for Joe Torrey. All right. Just brought the room down to this. Start. He just, I don't know, none of that shit hit. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Joe is doing another movie. Um, Roots. Roots? <laughs> He's doing Kunta, the hip hop years. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, What's his name again? Daryl what? And who did who he play for? He played for the Dallas Cowboys. Okay, what year was it? You don't even know, man. Oh, yeah. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, this guy I've known for a long time. <laughs> Personal friend of mine. We hang out all the time. 
Give it up for Daryl Johnston. Uh, nice job with Willie Beeman in that movie on any given Sunday, Jamie. <laughs> Jamie, you did a hell of a job portraying an NFL player in that movie. Thanks. Good job. Set the game back 15, 20 years. <laughs> All right. Uh, Emmett Smith sat down, tried to think of some things. It's very difficult to roast uh, a guy like this. He's, he's very clean. I, I know you've been pampered your whole career. Um, <laughs> the success is due to some incredible blocking up front. Dick <laughs> took the joke. A very, a very questionable work ethic from day to day. Uh, you know, I know these things, but, but the whole country doesn't need to know this. Um, I, I can't talk about it during a game. It, it's, it's unethical, it's petty. But then I thought, you know what? This isn't a game. So, I first heard Emmett Smith when I was in college. Cover story of the USA Today coming out of Escambia High School. Uh, I'm trying to do everything I can to just make my way through college football. Here's a kid that's 18. And he's on the cover of USA Today. Uh, little did I know what would happen years down the road is our paths crossed. Now, my career in Dallas started off pretty good. Uh, yeah, not bad, right, coach? You know, started off some special teams, worked, worked my way into a blocking fullback role. The last four games of the year, I was the feature back. Go figure that, huh? Crazy. Feature back on a 1-15 in team. But still, you know, feature back. <laughs> Uh, you know, pe people don't understand though, that was 1 of 15, but there, there were some close games. You know, very, very difficult to lose games 45 to 3 in those last few minutes. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'll let him go. I'm not, I, I'm, not, I'm not a comedian. I'm not going to take shots. I'm just going to talk about Emmett. I'll talk to Jamie afterwards behind closed doors. We'll get this whole thing straight out. <laughs> if you see him with a star on his forehead later tonight, you know we got everything settled. I've done a lot of interviews this, uh, this last month as, as Emmett gets ready to break Walter Payton's record. The one game that, that everybody wants to talk about is, uh, is the Giants game of, uh, of 1994. We go into the playoffs, it was the last game of the year. Everything's on the line. If we lose the football game, we have to go on the road the next week as a wild card. If we win, we get home field and we get a bye. And if you're a Cowboy fan, you remember the game. Emmett Smith basically carries the team the whole afternoon. <laughs> Yeah, you help me in the back. Will yeah. you do feed him with stuff? No, I help oh, you. Are you gonna help him? I help you. Right. Him you hold him, I'll hit him. Uh, well, congratulations. Uh, I just wish I could be there the day that you break the record. And uh, it honestly was hard to roast you because you were a quality person. Thank you, man. Ladies and gentlemen, a lot of people wanted to be here tonight for you, Emmett, but they just really didn't give a fuck. And. Um, Bobby Brown and Whitney Houston wanted to be here. They asked me, was the party gonna be cracking? <laughs> I was like, not until y'all get there. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, Monique! Hey, y'all. Um, first, let me say, Shaq, thanks for inviting me, baby. Emmett, real cool brother, I wish you all the best. I think that you are one of the greatest players that I've ever seen play in football. But you know how when your career starts getting a little fucked up, when you start doing commercials with Alf? <laughs> <laughs> 
that's when I said this shit is on the downfall. Yeah. This nigga is talking to a dummy. What the fuck is going on? I got nervous for you, Emmett. I got nervous for you. I said, ain't this a bitch? They treating Emmett bad? Damn. Damn. I'm talking with Alf. And I want to say, I mean, I'm going to say this, I'm going to say it because, you know, everybody, everybody's being real cool and shit. They don't want to say shit to hurt you. But I'm going to say it because you're my brother in, in Christ. And that's why I'm going to say the shit I'm going to say so you can get your shit back in order. Jimmy, the front line is fucked up. The front line is fucked up. Emmett, now, let me tell you what I did. Let me tell you what I did, okay? Because if you remember, now, Shaq, a couple years ago, the free throws was fucking with you. The free throws wasn't something you could do, right? Remember that? Remember that? And they wasn't giving you no endorsement shit. Remember that? And I work with Shaq. I work with Shaq seven days a week, 23 hours a day working on the free throw. That's the kind of shit I do for my brothers. I did that shit. Now he has the Shaq pack, Emmett. He has the shot pack with Burger King. You keep fucking around with Alf. <laughs> now, I'm trying to tell you, Emmett, what I can do for you. What I can do for you. Now, my fee is not that high. It's not that high. I'm only $75,000 for the first hour. But after that, I start working out. Now, I know your wife is here. Pat, how you doing, baby? You have a wonderful man here. Now, listen, Pat, so that we have a good understanding. I don't sleep with none of my clients. Unless it's gonna help them enhance their shit. <laughs> now, what I am essentially doing is I'm securing your future. I sleep with Emmett, you know you got that big house and them pretty diamonds for life. So don't worry about it if Emmett don't come home a couple nights. Just calm your ass down, let me do what I do so we can get Emmett a Shack Pack Burger King deal. That's the kind of shit I'm working on with Emmett. That's all I'm gonna tell you. That's all I'm gonna tell you. Name it, brother. They said you get ready to break Walter Payton's record, right? How many more games you got to do that? To do that? I got 16 to do it. You got 16 games to do it. When you want to start working, <laughs> <laughs> we can work. We can start tonight. I let you tackle me now, but shit, I tackle back. <laughs> 24, 26. Wait a minute, shit. I'm not ready yet. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is, this is the coolest thing, baby, to do a roast with some wonderful brothers, you know, with the Shaq shit, and, the, and this is the second time you're doing the uh, roast. I need, you know, I want to roast somebody, somebody to do me, but fuck it, it ain't about me. I'm not a football player, a basketball player. I just tell jokes. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Brother, I wish you all the best. Congratulations to you. You are truly one of the greats. Thank you, baby. Thank you. Dude, that was a great job. That's what it's all about. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Who's that? Monique will be performing at the buffet. The uh, greats. <laughs> you ain't saying shit, Jamie. You ain't saying shit. I will be performing like from six to six. Y'all like y'all don't see that shit. Now, come on. <laughs> Oh my God, if you think I'm going to hell, wait till this motherfucker comes up. He's going to hell in a handbasket. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, Jeff Ross. Thanks, Bob. Representing right. your people. How about a hand for your host, Jamie Foxx, everybody? Yeah. Nice to see you back in men's clothes. <laughs> I tried to look good for you. I got a haircut. Does this look bad? You can tell me. You know what's a bad haircut when halfway through the haircut, the guy just drops his scissors and he goes, fuck it. <laughs> he goes, fuck this shit. <laughs> this is all right. Nice to see you, Emmett. Good to see you, man. Thanks for having me. You know, I, uh, I was so excited to be here and see Shaq and Emmett and hang out with all these comedians. I feel like I died and went to Harlem. <laughs> This ain't a roast, it's a barbecue. <laughs> yeah. That's a cabassier. Yeah. I haven't seen this many black people in one place since Don King and Mike Tyson were handing out free turkeys. <laughs> Some of the niggas got mad. They got everybody but Slappy White in this motherfucker. No, uh, but this is great. It's really an honor to be here at the Wayne's Brothers Family Picnic. <laughs> oh, shit. 
I'll keep it short because Moose Johnson did all my shit. <laughs> Like Jamie said, R. Kelly wanted to be here, but he was R. arrested. <laughs> that guy went from fucking young pussy to being young pussy. <laughs> yeah! If he had just worn a priest collar, he wouldn't have these problems today. <laughs> But Emmett, you know, I'm here for basically two reasons. First reason is I'm a big, big fan of yours. Second reason is Shaq sent me a beautiful letter saying he wanted me to come and it was for charity. And I knew it was really from Shaq because it was signed S-H-A-C-K. <laughs> Shaq, man, you look good, you look good. Congratulations, your, your, uh, your knuckles look scraped. Did you walk here? Shaq looks like a gorilla, but I saw him trying to peel a microphone. Is he laughing? Poor Shaq, he took me to see Siegfried and Roy last night. Halfway through, the white tiger started barking at him. And I know, Shaq, I know you're world champion. I know you're world champion. But you're so big and clumsy. Watching you play basketball is like watching a retard fuck. Shaq, you take more bad shots than Jason Williams. Is he here? Then fuck him. No, I'm teasing you, Shaq. You know that. You were great in the Green Mile. <laughs> No, come on, man. Shaq, even you gotta admit your movies are bad, man. Look at me, all right? Stop making movies. Now memorize that and repeat it to Rick Fox. Is he here? Then fuck him. But Shaq, you know, stick to basketball. That's your thing, you know? This year, the Lakers swept the Nets like Joe Torrey's gonna sweep this place up after we leave. <laughs> Damn. This is a hot crowd, Jamie. You warmed them up, baby. Hey, baby, I'm with you. Fuck you. <laughs> Nate Newton wanted to be here, but he had trouble stuffing his weed into the overhead compartment. <laughs> Jerry Jones wanted to be here, but he had anything better to do. And Troy Aikman wanted to be here, but he got a concussion opening the invitation. <laughs> this is a cool day, and so you got Jimmy Johnson. How about a hand for one of the best coaches here tonight? Jimmy, the Dolphins called. They want their deposit back. <laughs> ah, this is all right. But the real man of the honor tonight is living legend Emmett Smith, if I can get serious for a second. But Monique's right. Don't you have a manager agent to tell you about these commercials? You're a future Hall of Fame. You're doing commercials with an out-of-work puppet? What, they couldn't get the robot from Lost in Space? <laughs> they couldn't get the parrot from Beretta? <laughs> oh, shit. But you know, we all can come up to the microphone and make fun, but the truth is every comic up here dreamed of one day being a Dallas Cowboy. And the only one who even came close was Monique. <laughs> Monique 
you know she's a big girl? Yeah. Don't get your ass kicked in here now, uh, Jeff. No, all that shit is cute. Keep it over there now. Don't get fucked up at the roast barbecue, whatever the fuck you call it. If I get up, uh-huh. <laughs> Shaq, don't do that. <laughs> I heard Shaq's penis is so big right now it's being roasted at Caesar's Palace. <laughs> Hey, Amit, uh, years ago, I saw you play at the Super Bowl in Atlanta, and I was always rooting for Buffalo because they had lost a few in a row, and I always root for the underdog. But your family was sitting in the box right next to mine, and they were throwing out so much love and cheering you on so hard, and I started cheering for you, and I've been cheering for you ever since. Much love, Emmett Smith. God bless you. <laughs> Get him ass off you, Monique. Get him, get him off you, Monique. Yeah, we're gonna hit that later. We're gonna hit that later. <laughs> Give it up for Jeff Ross, ladies and gentlemen. This is a great job. Still can't get a job on TV. That's great. That's great. Jeff Ross' dick so small he could pee on his nuts. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> without further ado, <laughs> the man with the good shit, <laughs> the only motherfucker to ever wear a fur in Dallas, Texas to court. <laughs> I'm like, motherfucker, you going to jail for the fur alone, nigga, they you going to jail. <laughs> You got a fur in this motherfucker, Michael? <laughs> I'm gonna be honest for you, with you for a second. Don't, don't get up yet, Mike, and, and sock me. Hold on. I'm from Terrell, Texas, right outside of Dallas. And I'm gonna tell you something. I'm a Dallas fan for everything. Dallas Mavericks, we got Mark Cuban in the house. Please give him some love. He turned it around. Mark is fucking a lot of bitches, too. He's fucking a lot of bitches. Uh, <laughs> I'm from Dallas. These guys really to me, Emma Smith, Michael Irvin, Troy Aikman, who I don't know why he didn't show up. These guys are my heroes. And Mike, man, I'm going to tell you something, dog. The best to ever do it. I don't give a fuck about none of these other football players, and I let them know, too. Even when I see them and I see the Oakland Faders and all these other motherfuckers, I let them know. I don't give a fuck. Close, but no cookie. I have to take time out to say one of the true heroes in this game, other than Emmett Smith, Mr. Michael Irvin, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, hey, uh, hey, uh, hey. Yeah. I can't, boy. I cannot believe I'm me. I can't, I can't believe I let them do this. These are, hey, DJ, these are pros, man. They told us to come and share some stories that we know about him. These are pros, man, so don't, don't worry about them messing with you. They got that fella coming up here. He got he just, oh, and only white folk write down everything. They got everything written down. You don't see a brother. We don't prepare like that. We just come up here and go off the cup. And E, I don't know why you let them get you into this. A roast. Y'all know this is a white folk idea. <laughs> the only time you're going to get a brother to stand still in a chair and let people talk about him like this is when you're in a courtroom and you've been forced. <laughs> See, this, this, this is crazy. This is straight white folks. Like, I can't believe I'm here, man. They told me to come. They told me, people like Coach Johnson, I didn't want to come up here with all these. These are real comedians. I'm a football player. They said, what? Football player. You know? Hey, DJ, we're supposed to come and share some stories about Emmett. Monique. Monique over here. Let me tell y'all something. Monique. She don't know nothing about football. You know what she just said to me? I'm going I'm to share this, man. You know what she said to me? She said, how long you known Emmett? I said, I know him for quite a while. She said, you ever played against him? I said, yeah. Right here is where I would curse if I still curse. Like, what you mean have I ever played against him? I just played off like, oh, a little, you know, a little. I don't play with him forever. Forever. They got people up here that don't know nothing about football. White boy up here dressed like Elvis Presley up here telling his jokes. <laughs> Y'all don't say nothing about it. That's okay. That's okay. Like now, I, I come, yeah, I come out and out my outfit, you want to say something. He come out here with Elvis and red bedroom shoes. Let me, let me, let me. 
Let me give y'all an Emmett Smith story. I'm, I'm going to try to remember these things. Y'all know I smoked a lot of weed. I'm going to try to remember some yeah. of this stuff if yeah. I can. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Y'all know it messes with your memory. Oh, it messes with your memory. So I, I don't know. And I won't be long. So y'all ain't gonna get that music going on me. I won't be long. I don't need this mess. Fox paid me a lot of money now. You know, I don't need this. Let me tell you. I'll give you one story. Because Emmett, honestly, Emmett is a good dude. And everybody, you always see Emmett, and he's quiet. And you think Emmett is a real humble kind of fella. And Emmett was just a rookie. Well, we went to visit him at his crib. You remember, we went down to Pensacola. He just got in, had a great rookie season. He had a great second year, so we wanted to take me to his hometown. So I'm going to his hometown. It's a true story. This is a true story. This fellow, man, we driving. He picked me up from the airport. He driving home. Do you know, we passed something. And all I look, I look over to him, and I see a big old globe on his shoulder. He like, hell. He said, you see that? I said, what? He said, you, you, you didn't see that? I said, what? He said, wait a minute. We turned around, got back on the highway. We got back on the highway. We rode again. He said, you see that? I said, what? You didn't see it? We turned around and went again. I said, this nigga tripping. <laughs> this nigga tripping. Man, I want to get to the hotel and get me some rest. You know, back then, get me a joint. I was smoking still. <laughs> anyway, anyway, we go the third time around. And he finally showed me what he wanted to show me. I said, Emmett, man, stop the car. Show me what you wanted to show me. This is humbled Emmett Smith. We ride by this sign. Welcome to Pensacola. Pensacola, Florida, that's where he's from. Anybody in from Pensacola? Yeah. I am. All two of y'all. See, <laughs> welcome to Pensacola, home of Emmett Smith. <laughs> right. Population 37. <laughs> I said, nigga, we did all that for this. Are you crazy, man? I'm telling you, this kind of brother he is. Well, anyway, I visited Pensacola the other day. You know, you, you weren't in town, but I rode by. I saw that sign. They changed that sign. It says, welcome to Pensacola. Home of Roy Jones Jr. Home of Roy Jones Jr. That's what it That's what it said. That's what it said, man. That's the truth. That's really what it said. I promise y'all, I'm getting off this stage right now. You see what I'm saying? Because I'm up here with pros, man, and I'm not finna be up here making a fool out of myself. Shaq, I don't care what they said about you, brother. I appreciate you. Every, everything you stand for, brother. You, you know, you're just, you're, you're a good man. You're a good man. And I'm going to tell you straight off the bat. Some of these fellas up here, I ain't never heard of. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They can talk about me like they want to, but uh, I got my money. You know what I mean? <laughs> See what I'm saying? And I ain't never heard of a lot of them chumps. So no matter what y'all say, Mike Black, but Mike Rich, so you can have it how you want to. And I'm going to tell y'all, you white folks are amazing. This is Las Vegas, and there's so much to do in Las Vegas, and y'all brought a ticket to this thing. Boy, y'all serious. Thank y'all. Oh, my. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a person, without further ado, you don't want to miss this. Somebody that you've never heard of. Ladies and gentlemen, Guy Tory. <laughs> Give it up for Jamie Foxx and his teeth. Them big dominoes you got in your motherfucking mouth. A big six to the board. <laughs> them some big motherfuckers, man. Golly, them tombstones? I thought you was Tiger Woods for a minute. I'm Inglewoods. What's up, y'all? How y'all doing? All right. I don't know where to start. I don't know where to start. I know this image. I know this is your night, you know, but, you know, you got to wait, motherfucker. I'm going to mosey on to you later. I want to give a big round of applause to one of the uh, Maloof brothers, uh, owner of the Sacramento Kings. Please, please give a big round of applause. No, don't move. Stop yeah, give to that Maloof, motherfucker. Man. Hey, Come Maloof. on, now. Maloof. He's still hurt. He's still Y'all almost did it. It was two joints away from the damn ring, motherfucker. Chris Webber got to get high after halftime, motherfucker. I mean, Chris Webber, I didn't know if that was, that motherfucker was, what, what's up, coach? Come on now, y'all almost did it, though, man. Y'all hurt, man. Golly, Vladi, damn. You know, damn well, if he wasn't the king, you wouldn't sit, ne sit next to an airplane with that motherfucker, man. Vladi look like a terrorist. He giving a damn airplane, check his shoes, check his damn shoes, check his shoes. 
That whole team is messed up, man. Come on. Turkaloo, Turkle Jerk, what's his name? What's his name? He looks like he's supposed to be retarded, but God changed his mind. <laughs> ah! <laughs> he running down the court. That whole team is dysfunctional, man. And, and, and Bibby? Oh, Bibby nice, though. Bibby nice. That beige motherfucker can play. That, I don't know what color that motherfucker is. That's, that's a real undercover brother. I don't know. Is he black? Is he black or is he white? Is he black? Is he black? Check his credit. Check his credit. You can tell. <laughs> but maybe, ne maybe next year, man. I know not next year. Y'all got to wait a couple of years. That's Sacramento. Come on. Bobby Jackson. He nice, but he, he need a bath. That motherfucker look dusty. I mean, come on now. He looks like he on the schoolyard somewhere. Who got next? Who got next? You got, you got your five? You got your five? You got your five? Let me run with you. Let me run with you. <laughs> Sacramento Kings, man. We'll lose to the Kings of Comedy before we lose to the Kings of Sacramento. All right? All right? And then that damn New Jersey series. Come on, Shaq. That was like practice, man. You can't send a Jason kid to do a Superman's job. What the hell is wrong with them? And Jason kid got a nice game. Don't get me wrong, but he, you know, he got to quit doing the interviews with his son. That little big head motherfucker, man. You... <laughs> Original bobblehead dog. <laughs> Come on, Jason Kidd. Leave your son out of it, man. Did you see that head? Come on, now you like Gazoo from the Flintstones. <laughs> Flintstone, Flintstone. I know, I ain't had any kids yet, but the, that's a big head motherfucker, man. I was sitting next to him one time. I was holding a real conversation. I thought he was a grown ass man. I'm like, what's up, dog? Like, How the stock market? He was like, Google. I'm like, oh shit, I'm sorry, you a kid. You a kid, I'm sorry. That's Jason Kidd's son. That's, that's Jason Kidd's son. That's all. Because he's, you know, he do the interview and he's sitting there with the kid and, and it looks like that Mike's Hard Lemonade commercial with the little head coming out like <laughs> Mike don't make iced tea. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. Oh, all right. my God. You're going to hell. All right, that's... You're going to hell. You're going straight to hell. You're going to hell. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to get to uh, the meat. You know, why are we here in the first place, Emmett? You know, looking like, you know, honey, I shrunk chat. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Yeah, I'm gonna that's a good one right there. That's <laughs> that myth that black people don't look alike? Yeah, y'all just killed that motherfucker, man. <laughs> y'all look like Dr. Evil and Minnie Me. <laughs> oh, I want one meal in food stamps. <laughs> But Emmett, man, you, you know, no short motherfucker, you all right with me. I ain't mad at you, man. You know, you've been around for a long time, and you still playing. You was around since you know, Don Meredith and this motherfucker, man. You know, you was around, you know, you went from a, how it feels to go from sugar to shit, though? You was on a Super Bowl team, man. Now you with a toilet bowl team. You went from having quarterbacks to quarter blacks. <laughs> You don't know who quarterback in that damn team. It's like baseball. Like, you got to, it's like pitchers. Who's in the starting rotation this damn week? <laughs> and 22, that's your number. That's not your age, man. Quit. <laughs> quit. Quit the damn game, man. I know you Florida cats. You know, IQ ain't that big, so, you know. I'm nah, motherfuckers. But it's cool that you stuck around this damn long, man, you know. You know, it's cool now because you've seen the game evolve, you know. You had the Xbox now, you got the PlayStation. You know, when you started playing, they had this motherfucker. It was like... <laughs> <laughs> this was you right here. You still playing. This is 1977. You still playing. So still kicking. <laughs> I don't know how you beautiful wife. I don't know how your dick get hard. Shit. You old, man. <laughs> dick wouldn't get hard if you're frozen. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to go there. <laughs> but you about to break ooh, some ooh. record. Walter Payton, you know, Johnny Unitas, one of them. <laughs> you still got the helmet that folded in your pocket, the leather shit. I'm proud of you, man. Got the big rocks in your ear. Michael Irvin, teammate, man, said all the beautiful things about you, bro. You yeah. know, I like the new TV show you got, you know. 
It's Michael Irvin and Robert Downey Jr. and, you know, Whitney Houston. <laughs> survivor. <laughs> Whoever get the rock, that's a survivor. <laughs> I'm sorry, I ain't gonna fuck with you like that. Man. But you look like Count B Blackula with that shit you got on. That, that suit was some bullshit, man. I wear this, but you had some purple, some, some pink shit on one time. You look like a Pepto Bismol bottle. I understand. <laughs> I understand. Now, Jimmy Johnson, don't laugh, man. You old ass, man. You, you know, you didn't do, did you do the Jerry Jones shit? The, 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 what's, wrong with you, what's wrong with your damn owner, man? He looks like the mask, man. His face all up, tucked the fuck in. <laughs> I get him. <laughs> it's all good, man. Thanks for having me here, Big Shaq. My brother Joe. You know, I ain't gonna fuck with you, dog. You know. What? I ain't gonna fuck with Joe. Man. What? I ain't, man. This motherfucker got silicone bitch. muscles, bitch, man. I ain't fucking with him. That shit ain't real. <laughs> you know, Joe, when I came out here, you know, LA, moved to LA, and Joe was getting me in the movies and shit, man. Hey. I'm getting Joe in the movies now. <laughs> 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 I'm out of here, y'all been good. Emmett, peace and love, yeah. baby. Hey, man. Give it up for God, Tori. Love doing Lilo and Stitch, man. You were great. <laughs> God did have a good conversation. <laughs> He's doing the follow-up movie to that, Tar Baby and Me. I love you, man. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> we got to keep this thing rolling. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to bring you a legend up to the stage. I will not clown this man at all because he just got through taking his medicine and I don't want to fuck with his whole <laughs> equilibrium. Ladies and gentlemen, please, without further ado, Dick Gregory. Thank you. Let me first say we thank you. Praise God. We've all made it here safely today. Hallelujah. All right. Hallelujah. I pray to God that your return and my return will be equally as safe. One of the horrible things about being a legend before you die <laughs> is everybody think you know everything. <laughs> I got off the plane today and first thing the press said, you think they'll ever catch Ben Loudon. I said, no. He said, why? I said, well, if it took y'all a year to arrest Beretta, and he lived right around the corner from the police station. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know how far Afghanistan is from here? <laughs> now, I don't know if you white folks know it, before y'all was down on being led and been lazy. We was the Bens. Been ugly, been lazy, been ignorant, been <laughs> been snorting, been busted, been crazy. Now we here. Y'all been our friend for a long time. <laughs> Someone was asking me, one of the press was asking me about, did, did I think, who did I think, you know, kidnapped the little 14-year-old girl in Utah? I said, I don't know who did it, but I know who didn't do it. Catholic priest, because if he'd been there, he'd have took that brother. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. And if Art Kelly would have been there, he'd have took that 11 year old sister. So we know this. Yeah. <laughs> that was not medicine I was taking, son. I, I called my wife because I've been flying from Paris and changing planes and I'm just about to break a fast, and I didn't have time to drink my right amount of water, so I called my wife. And by the way, to you, brother, um, your wife is sitting out there. Me and my wife have been married 43 years. No, right. no, 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 no. I'm trying to school this brother. Love ain't got nothing to do with it. She told me when we first got married, nigga, if you ever leave me, I'll hurt you. <laughs> yeah, her to keep you home for a long time. <laughs> And if you make any big money, there's another word that Michael Jordan just found out about called half. <laughs> uh, so I called Lil and said, you know, I, I, I haven't been able to drink the water I need 
And she said, well, you know, you take them little ginseng, you know, little liquid ginseng. She said, why don't you just pop two or three of those? And that's what you saw me doing. I was taking my ginseng, and when I had to leave the stage just a few minutes ago, I realized I took my Viagra by mistake. <laughs> And I'm one of the few brothers that admit I use it. You know, usually when you catch a brother buying it, he swear he's buying it for a white boy. <laughs> I use mine. And for those of y'all that's planning on using Viagra, do have some drawbacks. Sometimes you can't get through that scanner at the airport. <laughs> <laughs> then they ask all them stupid questions. Have it been with you all day? Did you pack it yourself? <laughs> <laughs> Let me just say what a pleasure it is to be invited here by Shaq to roast athletes. And let me tell you what I mean by that. I'm 70 years old, so it was a time when I first came to Vegas, black and white folk couldn't sit in a room like this together. Huh? You couldn't stay at hotels here. Huh? And thanks to an athlete by the name of Jackie Robinson, I'll never forget it, April the 17th. Huh? 1947, a white man named Brant Rickey, huh, that said, I'm doing it cause it's right. And he said, come on up here. And the planet has never been the same. Swing low, sweet chariot. And for you young folks that don't know how far we came, it used to be called Negro History Week. Now it's called Black Month. Because when you know when they get ready to give us a month, be that month of February and all them days missing. I didn't think they'd give us a 31 day, but I was stunned when they laid February on us. Most black folks I know, not only do we not like February, we don't even understand it. I mean, what's a ground home? On February the 2nd, if the groundhog sees the shadow, six more weeks of winter, tell that to somebody living in Vegas. <laughs> I was in New York February the 2nd. I was doing this radio show, and this white dude say, today's groundhog day. What do you think will happen if the groundhog sees the shadow? I said, I don't play that, man. Back up off that. And the white boy got upset. What are you, anti-American, anti-social? I said, hey, man, I know you feel that way. You feel that way about it. Ask me again, I'll play it. Say today's Groundhog Day. What do you think will happen if the groundhog sees his shadow? I say, six more weeks of winter, sir. But since we're going to play it, let's keep on playing it. Suppose the groundhog came out today and didn't see his shadow, but saw five black dudes. What do that mean, white boy? He got nervous. He said, I don't know. I said, six more weeks of basketball, chump. <laughs> and so I leave you today. And I say to you, I thank you, I thank Shaq, I thank all of you. I thank entertainers for bringing us with fun and joy. And JJ, unless you got some big money, don't stay retired. Because when you ain't got no money and you're retired, see, I've read this all, I do a lot of research, and they talk about retired folks, you know, who ain't got no money, be eating dog food. And I didn't believe that till my brother retired. And I went to St. Louis to see him, and, and I said, what do you like to do the most? And he liked to, you know, play golf and play bid with and chase automobiles. <laughs> <laughs> and so I say tonight, I thank you. We've come a long ways. And for those of you that remember September 11th, just remember one thing. Fear and God do not occupy the same space. I love you. God bless you. Sweet chariot coming for to carry me home. <laughs> Shit ended. Good ladies and gentlemen, Dick Gregory, please recognize Black Moses. Black Moses. He was preaching out there, brother. Black Moses. Swinging low. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to keep this thing rolling. Another person that does not know anything about Emmett Smith and you don't know who the fuck he is, give it up for Doug Williams. Thank you. He is right. Nobody knows me, and I'm the only broke motherfucker on this panel. 
Everybody else came here to roast them and Smith. I came to this motherfucker for a deal. That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> I'd like to thank Shaq. For, well, actually, Shaq didn't invite me. I snuck in this motherfucker and uh, <laughs> just blended in with everybody. Shaq, give it up for Shaq. You got to give it up for him. Give it up for him. <laughs> Did you believe, as big as he is, this motherfucker complained all year about his toe? <laughs> and I, I can't believe somebody 7-1 was complaining about a toe. All that money this nigga's making, he complaining about it. Tell you, could cut my foot off and I'd still run up and down the damn court for the kind of money they pay Shaq. And I know how you hurt your toe, Shaq. Big ass Shaq is driving a little bitty Ferrari. Can you believe this big nigga can fit into a little bitty Ferrari? Nigga, that's how you hurt your toe trying to get in that Ferrari. Get you a real car. <laughs> I thought that was funny. Go ahead. <laughs> and Jamie. Get you a real cop. And Jamie, we happy for you. You done been in what? Two hit movies? Y'all get up. You been in two hit movies? We happy. Because you got off to a slow start, nigga. Nobody here saw Held Up or Bait. Did anybody here see Held Up or Bait? <laughs> nigga, thank God you got an LE, nigga. Thank God you got an LE. <laughs> thank God I got an LE. Oh, you great. <laughs> All right. And <laughs> hey, what's up, Monique? Uh-oh. They was talking about big women. I love big women, baby. Thank you, baby. I love big women. I love you because you are proud of the fact that you're big. You better know it. I'm tired of all these skinny bitches who won't admit that big women look good. That's what I'm talking about. I hate big women that try to hide the fact that they're big. They always say, uh, I'm just big boned. <laughs> No, nah, bitch, you got regular bones with big ass meat wrapped around them. That's why I love you, man. Big bones. <laughs> but I'm bones. <laughs> get him, dog. And Mike, where the hoes at, man? Where the hoes at? I came here to get some of some of these hoes, man. You got no hoes? No cocaine? Nigga, no wonder this party is so dead. We want you to lie this shit up. Is he right now? We're here for Emmett Smith. Do you have any jokes hey. for him tonight? God Tory got everybody out of the way, and I did too. I want to say this to Emmett Smith, man. I'm your conscience. It is a pleasure. Man, it sure did get hot in here. Am I fucking up right now? I'm your conscience. I really don't need to be up here right now. I don't know what the fuck I was thinking. When <laughs> brother start making itch. money, you can't tell him shit. I'm your kind. All right. <laughs> I wish I was in a movie with Jamie. <laughs> Maybe you're right about 48 that. hours. You are right about that. 72 hours. In fact, I don't know. In fact, nigga, I need a co-signer. Can you co-sign on the car for me? I just did another joke that didn't go over. <laughs> I'm your conscience. Maybe I should say something nice about Emmett and wrap it up. <laughs> or maybe I should talk about how black people have to struggle. Yeah, that'll get them on my side. Thank you very much, Jamie Foxx. Thank you. I, I needed the help. I appreciate it. I'm not Jamie Foxx. Anyway, I'm your Emmett. conscience. <laughs> Wow. The girls are looking at me like, who is this motherfucker? You'll never get a deal. I'm your conscience. Anyway, I'm going to say this in between. Anyway, I'm going to say this. Hey, it's a pleasure watching hey, you. Hey, it's a pleasure man. watching you. I hope you break the record I hope this you go. season. Thank y'all very much. Thank y'all very much. Me. I'm out of here. All right, now, I love y'all. Peace. Much. I'm glad you showed up. I had an extra 10 minutes. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for Doug Christie. Doug Christie. Ladies and gentlemen.
Ladies and gentlemen, this next person, this, this next guy is not a racist. He is a white man that has worked with many and many of black people. When I asked Jimmy Johnson what he felt about Emmett Smith, he said, hey man, he's a good old nigger, man. I mean, he's nice. <laughs> He's the best pickaninny I have ever met in my entire life. When it comes to jigadoos, that motherfucker's up there. <laughs> he runs like nobody else. I mean, them black folk, period. They just something else, man. God damn it. <laughs> this is how too. He is a wizard. He is a master at, well, not necessarily a master. Mass of, maybe. I see folks from Ames, Iowa, Tampa, Texas, San Angelo, all you white folks that, hey, now, tell the truth, you hadn't understood half of this shit they've been talking about. <laughs> I, I saw one old lady up here with bouffant hair, she's just laughing her ass off and shit. What'd he say? <laughs> Just laugh, laugh, laugh. She didn't understand the damn word they were talking about. I was in New Orleans here for the Super Bowl. And you know, I was going to do a little speech and one thing or another, and I wanted some exercise. So I, I went down one of the side streets, and you know, these autograph seekers, they're going on and you know, back and forth. And they, sti they still do it, even though I've been out of the game for a while. And so I'm walking fast and walking fast. True story. This damn... God, hey, 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 you know, and I go and I keep walking fast and keep walking. And it's, it, you know, it's like a damn cop scene. The car cuts me off on the sidewalk and out jumps him and Emmett says, what the hell, coach, you're running away from me? I said, true story, I said, no, I just thought there was another black guy wanting an autograph. <laughs> yeah, I mean, before we ever met Emmett Smith, Michael Irvin, and the owner of the Dallas Cowboys, Jerry Jones, and myself went out to work a quarterback by the name of Troy Aikman. So we, we went out to UCLA, and so, you know, Troy wants to kind of talk how good he is. He said, he said, well, I think you ought to draft me number one. I got the quickest release. You can look up in the books, Guinness World Book of Records, I got the quickest release. We said, oh, no, you, know, you got to be, you know, bullshitting us. Now. But we looked it up. Sure enough, quickest release, Troy Aikman. Well, you know, Michael, he, he ain't going to let somebody top him. Michael says, hey, you look it up in the book. You know why I'm one of the best receivers in the NFL? I got the biggest hands of any receiver in the NFL. Because you know what that means. But, but he says, I got the biggest hands. And we said, no, Michael, not really. We looked it up in a book, sure enough. Biggest hands in the NFL, Michael Irvin, world record. Well, Jerry Jones, owner of the Cowboys, he wasn't going to get topped. He said, you look it up in a book. I got the smallest penis in the world. I said, no way. So Troy and, and Michael and I looked it up in a book. And Jerry looked at me and said, who in the hell is this Emmett Smith? <laughs> now, I, I may have let out a secret, Pat. Now, you, now you, you don't, you can, I know you're going to tell everybody it's not really true. I'm sorry, Emmett, I had to give it up. Now, I'm not, two other white guys talked before me. I won't be as filthy as one, I won't be as long as the other. Uh, let, let me tell you something. When you go through what we went through, and we've all talked about it, it's hard to rag on a guy that's as good as this one right here. Yeah. I, one, one of the television crews that I talked to today said that yeah, you know, Emmett talked about a point we were walking off the field after one of the ball games, and I hugged him around the neck, and he said, Emmett, I love you. You know, white guy, black guy, love you. When you're the worst in the league, and all of a sudden you become the best, and how many in this room 
I don't care what it is, if it's doctor, lawyer, husband, wife, family man, basketball player, football player, can say that you're the very, very best. That's hard to say, and there's some folks up here that are the very, very best. And that's what gave me the love for some of these folks up here. It was one of the greatest times of my entire life, and it'll be the greatest memories I've ever had. And one of them is called this special guy right here, Emmett Smith. I didn't know I had a big watch your coach. <laughs> All right now, all right, looking good. This next brother, who has been on ESPN for too fucking long, uh, everybody else has moved on and got their own shows. I don't know what the fuck he's waiting on, but uh, I'm still with you, brother. Shit, stay black. Stuart Scott. Man, I'm on TV every night, but I got scared coming up here. Not because of y'all, because of Jamie. <laughs> How you doing, buddy? <laughs> Jamie looked good at any given Sunday, didn't he? I mean, he had, he had the, the Willie Beeman thing going on and the flexing and the posing. And then his very next movie got all swole up for Ali. I still think, and I'm not just saying this because I don't want him talking about me, should have got a nomination for Best Supporting Actor for Ali. Give it up for Jamie Foxx. Big shot. Third straight NBA title. Third straight NBA Finals MVP. My man scores 36 points, 14 boards every NBA Finals game he played, and he shot 65% from the free throw line. And he can thank, he can thank the Kings coach Rick Adelman. Did you all hear Shaq at the press conference? During the finals, Shaq was like, I was at home taking a dump. <laughs> That's just not a visual I want to imagine. <laughs> Big 7'1", 335-pound brother sitting on a toilet taking a dump. Sound like a bag of tools dropped. <laughs> the good thing is I'm not sure what he said. But uh, Shaq had to sit out a few games this year. Y'all remember that when he took that swing at Brad Miller? Brother, I'm glad you did not connect with him. Because I would have gone on Sports Center. It's like, welcome to Sports Center, there's a dead white man on the court. <laughs> Speaking of dead white men, has anybody seen Scott Pollard since the Western Conference Finals? <laughs> did y'all see when Shaq turned into Scott and broke him? <laughs> right in the sternum, broke just him. split him, broke him? And y'all think I'm going to say something bad about Shaq? Mm-mm. No, no. I tell you what I like about being a journalist, a broadcast journalist, is the whole locker room scene. Because I do believe, and y'all tell me if it's true, athletes will stand at their locker after a game butt naked. Just do an interview. Yeah, because, you know, they were double teaming me. and uh, You like that. And, uh, you know, so I just try to look at the open man. I think they do it to make sure that all the female reporters just keep their eyes up like that. Because you don't want to be a woman in the locker room. Yeah, Shaq, so... What in the third quarter <laughs> was I finished? But you know what? It's not really the women, though, who are looking in the locker rooms, is it? It's the dudes, isn't it? It's wow. all the reporters. Not like in a homophobic way, but just like, you know, so they can go back and tell their boys, like, yo, man, Shaq was, like, ridiculous. <laughs> and their boys don't care. They're like, dude, I don't care, you know. <laughs> so then, like, we get stupid. We go home and tell our lady, yeah, baby, Shaq was just, I mean, huge. And our lady's like, really? Tell me more. What? <laughs> Emmett's been there. <laughs> Emmett yeah. doesn't care about the team. Cowboys hadn't won a game since 1999. And Emmett's still trying to It's third and 27. Cowboys deep in their own territory. Emmett's in the huddle like, yo, man, sweep right. Sweep right. I gots to get mine. And you know, like, if there's a strike or if Emmett, like, gets hurt this year, you know he's going to come back next year just to get that record. Off tackle, pitch to Emmett Smith. And 53-year-old Emmett Smith is the new all-time leading rusher in the NFL. Man's got 148, correct me if I'm wrong, Michael. Career rushing touchdowns, right? More than anybody ever. 148 rushing, 159 total. 
and he keeps every football that you, right? Every, every time you score, you keep the football. What are you doing? <laughs> Do you have like a, a mantle at home with all your footballs on it? Who's doing this? I'm serious. I'm, I'm, <laughs> what are you doing? I, I've, I've always wanted, I do the highlight and Emmett like always takes the ball and he runs to this, gives it to the little man and he puts it in a bag. Do you, do you have all of them? He will be selling them in the store near you soon. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank Shaq and Emmett. Everybody's trying to get up here and be funny, but I want to tell you all something. Walter Payton probably had more heart than anybody that ever played football. And when you, when you realize the magnitude of what Walter did with a team that was not very good, except for one year, and then you realize that this man, about the third or fourth or fifth game this season, will break that record, you got to give him his props. Give it up for Emmett Smith. Thank you very much. Get up for Stu, watching penis. <laughs> <laughs> kind of threw me with that one. He was like, and then I looked down at his thing. And I said, wow. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> is that something you would say? <laughs> and then Emmett was there. <laughs> you gotta work on your segues and shit. I thought, I thought y'all was having a menage or twice. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our last, but one of the greatest, one of the legends. I'm not going to say anything about him because he's about to bring the pain. Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Coy. <laughs> shit, y'all could have did better than that. Michael Kaya, come on, shit. Right, I ain't, I don't come in here pretending and flossing. I don't know who the hell Emmett Smith is. They didn't. They didn't hire me because of that shit. I don't know him. They hired me because I'm funny. They say it's a roast. I did Shaq's last roast. They say, you funny as shit. We're going to have another roast. We're going to roast Emmett Smith. I said, who the fuck is that? They said he runs. He runs. Run, run back. Is that what it is? Tell me shit. I don't know. Run back. Yeah. Okay. Motherfucker, run. So I said, well, I'll come do some funny shit. How much? And they said, no, um, we're not really paying. It's a, like a, a benefit thing, you know, but he's got a black organization that he runs. I'm a black man. So I said, right on. How much? And they said, well, we, we can get you a room. We can get you a room. So we are in the room here. We'll be here till Sunday. Um, I'm, not, I'm not looking for a deal. I already got a deal. I don't know if I mentioned my new DVD, but I will mention it again. My Kai Project, run, don't walk, run and get it. Now, I was watching, I'm sitting on the end, I'm watching things unfold. And, uh, Doug, I'm sorry. <laughs> Whew! It ain't always easy to do this kind of thing. Now, if you don't know about this kind of thing, it's tricky. <laughs> Doug came up, you was going to do your thing, but I swear, <laughs> dog, you was like the Hindenburg. You crashed and burned, you hear me? You burst in the motherfucking flames. And then, Helping, he's throwing fucking gasoline on the fire. <laughs> that last gentleman, I, I'm a fan of yours from ESPN. I've been a fan of yours. I didn't know your name until today. You're, you're very good. This brother is very good, ESPN. And I ain't trying to rag on you. But people, anybody ever say you look like Mr. Potato Head? <laughs> no, just look. Stand up. Look down. Just stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. <laughs> now you tell me that's not Mr. Potato Head. You had the fucking game. Don't try to be nice because you got ESPN. <laughs> Michael Irvin talking about only white folks take notes. I wrote notes the whole damn time. And I'm tired of this. All night I've been hearing white, black, white, black. I don't believe in racism. I believe in race pride. I'm not mad at white folks by what their ancestors did to my ancestors and some of you motherfuckers still trying to do. I just know <laughs> that we all got to live together. We got to work together. That's why I, you, you ever watch my act, you'll see my, I don't even do no motherfucking racist jokes. So I'm gonna just do one. Okay. <laughs> white man, a black man, an Asian, and a Hispanic. They're all on top of this tall mountain, Mount Kilimanjaro, Mount Kilio, Mount whatever. The Hispanic said, this is for my people, jumped off the mountain. The Asian said, this is for my people, jumped off the mountain. 
black man said, this is for my people. Grabbed the white dude, threw that motherfucker up. <laughs> it's fucked up. It's fucked up. But white folks, when you tell it, just flip it. Just flip it. You, anybody can tell it. Just flip it. Shaq has been a friend of mine for a long time, and I really appreciate it. Emmett, I've known you, and I didn't know that that's who you were. I, I, no, really. You, you ever know how you meet people? Because, you know, I'm, a, I'm not like a full-fledged celebrity. I'm like a semi-celebrity. Yeah, yeah, some people know my name, can't put the face with it. Some people recognize the face. Burn the match. Some people put the name with the face, and that'll give me a free drink. So, being a semi-celebrity, I find myself in these circles all the time. So, I met, I must, we must have met 20, 30 times. I know your lovely wife, Pat, and, and I know, but I didn't know who the fuck he was. Then that they sent me this information, you a bad motherfucker, man. You a you bad. bad. Send me dressed up like the pastel prince, but the colors are flowing, brother. You got the alligator shoes. You know, it's hard to wear alligator shoes. A lot of people don't even know what, it, what goes into wearing alligator shoes or crocodile shoes. First of all, you got to hire some homeless guy to wear them for three, four months. First, to break them motherfuckers in. They're too hard. You got, you got to break them in. They're hard, but if you don't wear clothes. You don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Okay, and then, <laughs> one more thing I do want to point out. People keep, he had made something about, the, uh, mentioned about, the, I am the very, very, who would say I am the very, very best? Somebody, you came up and said, you talked about the very, very best. And no one, how many people in the room can say that a very, ve I'm the fucking very, very best when it comes to comedy. I don't even know how they had a show called The Kings of Comedy without the motherfucking king. Let me, let me just say that right now, okay? So... In, in saying all that, I want to say that I am honored, actually, to be here and to come here and be able to just, just give some laughter with you and, and to share with you because you are a bad motherfucker. And I know you're going to break that record. Incidentally, it's 539. But anyway, you're going to break that record, brother. To it's going to be off the hook. And we 539 are to tie. To what? 539 to 539, tie. brother. I got to shit on a piece of paper. Huh? To tie the record. 530 to tie. To so we got to go one over that. Right. So if he go 539 and a half... Keep my motherfucker. I know you can make it happen. I love you, brother. We respect you. And I'm glad to be part of this. God bless you real good. Give Thank it up you. for Mr. Emmons. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Appreciate you, don't throw no shit. Ty, huh? Give me my shit. I'm tell Give me you. my shit. Get the CD. Jiminy Cricket. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is time, it is time to meet the young man here who we are here to celebrate. Young man. How are you? How old are you? I'm 33. 33? Yeah. I'm older than you. <laughs> I'm 34. Yeah, I'm Shit. young. I'm not where, I'm, where I really wanted to be in my career. But it's okay. <laughs> anyway, that's another story. Anyway, <laughs> Emmett Smith, I'm going to tell you something, man. I grew up in Texas. I knew all of the old cats. Anybody that really followed the Dallas Cowboys knows Billy Joe Dupree, knows Thomas Hollywood Henderson, Bob Lilly, Cliff Harris, Roger Starback, uh, Scott Laidlaw, Golden Richards, Tony Dorsett, the motherfucker, TD, you know what I'm saying? That mother. I'm going to tell you something. Tony Hill, Preston Pearson, Drew Pearson with the afro, the great catch, the whole nine. Tony Banks <laughs> wasn't worth a shit. <laughs> when you come to a legendary organization, it takes legends to keep that legendary thing going on. Jimmy Johnson it takes Michael Irvin, legends. It takes Emmett Smith, Troy Aikman. I don't know why Troy didn't show up. <laughs> uh, Moose. But I'm going to tell you something, brother. To come from where you come from, and I come from the South, and everybody knows that you come... You, you, you come with just your dreams, your hopes, and you come with your, your athletic ability, and hopefully you got a great accountant so you won't be walking around just broke as you know, fuck. And the thing about it is this, is that you've done some things, and I tell all of these guys that it's hard to play at that level and be the best. When Shaquille O'Neal goes out there and plays and, and is the best, I'm not going to make any jokes. When Shaquille does his thing, he's the best. They try to even change the game to, 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 to keep you from being, they got the zone now and shit, and all of this kind of stuff. Too tall, too strong. But Emmett, <laughs> Hollywood Henderson, I said that. He did cocaine too. What I'm, <laughs> what I'm trying to say is, is that Emmett, this is your night, man. All the people that are here love you. Your lovely wife is here. Give it up for her. In there with yes, Pat. Yes, yes. 
we're going to cut this short and we're going to bring you up, man, and, and say whatever you want to say about us and me and the whole thing. This has been your night. Please, ladies and gentlemen, Emmett Smith. Well, this is a little different roast than I thought it was going to be. They didn't talk about me as bad as I thought they were. It's a good thing that I had other company so they can disperse all the jokes amongst all of them. But uh, it, is, it is indeed a great pleasure to be here. I want to thank Shaq for giving me the opportunity to come out and, and do the roast with him. I think it's been a great turnout. Hopefully you have enjoyed it. Um, I'm not going to say much about these people. They want to give me a chance to come back and say something about them. I don't have to. They just weren't all that funny. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, I just want to thank my wife for putting up with this stuff. You know, yeah. Jamie, missing this flight today three times. Uh, didn't comb his hair when he got here. And uh, showed up with a suit on with sneakers. That's not like brothers. <laughs> so, you know. But uh, it was wonderful, and I just want to just say thank you to everybody coming out and supporting. Thank you. Can we get you on your feet, please, ladies and gentlemen? Get you on your feet, please. Ladies and gentlemen, your host, the one that put it all together, Superman, Shaquille O'Neal. Say, say a few things, man. God bless. God bless. Good luck. I just want to thank Love you too, I love you too I want to thank everyone for coming out Thanks Jamie Nappy head motherfucker uh, The white boy, whatever his name is I forgot his name uh, The Maloofs, I enjoy kicking your ass See you next year in the door again <laughs> But uh It was a fun night We're doing it for charity Thank you, uh, Mr. Gregory, you're a legend. Thank you, Mr. Irvin. Exactly. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Dickhead Collier. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> Thank you, Monique. I love your big ass. I could do a lot with your big ass. <laughs> I'm in room 19213. I just want to say thanks for coming out, and I love you. Thank you, Emmett. You're going to break the record, the third, fourth, fifth game. Hopefully, I can be there. You are the best. I love you. Peace. <laughs>